Hi guys, in this video we're going to be discussing elastic potential energy. We'll look at an elastic potential energy example, finding the work done graphically, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what is elastic potential energy? Well, when we stretch or compress a spring, we are applying a force to it and doing work. So for example, in this picture, someone is exerting a force on the spring. As the spring extends, this force is acting over a distance, which means work is being done by the person, which means that energy must be being transferred. Since work done is the same thing as energy transfer. So where is all of this energy going? Well, energy can be transferred into and out of the elastic potential energy store. The arrow showing energy going into the elastic potential energy store shows what happens when we do work on the spring. If we let go of the spring, it will return to its natural length and the elastic potential energy will leave and energy will be lost from the elastic potential energy store. Now you might well ask, does any of the energy that we put in when we do work go anywhere else? Well, when an object is elastically distorted, the answer is no. All of the energy is transferred into the elastic potential energy store. So here this picture represents us using the chemical energy in our muscles to do work on a rubber band. And doing work is an energy transfer and the energy is transferred from our chemical energy to the elastic potential energy of the rubber band. So that was the elastic case, but if the distortion is inelastic, some energy will be transferred into other stores, such as thermal energy stores. So for example, if we do work in trying to bend a paper clip, then some of this energy goes into the elastic potential energy store, but some of the energy goes into the thermal energy store of the paper clip. So this is actually quite interesting. It means that when we bend a paper clip, it will actually get hotter. Now, below the limit of proportionality, and remember the limit of proportionality was the point where the force stops being proportional to the extension. Below this limit, energy transferred in stretching a spring is given by a formula the elastic potential energy is equal to one half multiplied by the spring constant and multiplied by the extension squared. And let's take a look at the units in this equation. Well, the elastic potential energy is an energy, so it's measured in joules. The spring constant has units of newtons per meter and the extension is measured in meters. So this is the energy transferred when we stretch a spring, but where is this energy going? Well, the limit of elasticity is above the limit of proportionality. So we must just be talking about elastic distortions here. But we said earlier that in elastic distortions, all of the energy is transferred into the elastic potential energy store. So that means that not only does this formula give us the energy transfer when we stretch a spring, it tells us the energy stored in a stretched spring. So let's take a look at an example and we're going to need to remember to look at the units. Let's imagine a spring of spring constant 25 newtons per meter is stretched from its natural length of 10 centimeters to a length of 32 centimeters. Let's quickly draw this information on a diagram. So the natural length is 10 centimeters and it is stretched to a length of 32 centimeters. Notice we didn't say that the extension was 32 centimeters. And in fact, we can see from the diagram that the extension is 22 centimeters. So now we've made a bit more sense of the information we've been given, let's move on to the thing we actually want to answer. How much energy is transferred to the spring's elastic potential energy store? 
Well, the first step, as always, is going to be to write out the relevant equation. In particular, we need the equation for the elastic potential energy, which tells us that it is equal to a half multiplied by the spring constant and then multiplied by the extension squared. And as always, the next thing that we need to do is to check that the units we've actually been given are correct. Well, the spring constant is in newtons per meters, so that's already all good. The extension of the spring, however, we currently know to be 22 centimeters, but we need it to be in meters. To get from centimeters to meters, we divide by 100. So this is 0 0.22 meters. Now that our units are correct, we can substitute our values into the equation. And this tells us that the elastic potential energy is equal to one half multiplied by the spring constant multiplied by the extension squared. And finally, putting this into a calculator, we will be able to compute the answer for the elastic potential energy. And we will find that the elastic potential energy is equal to 0 0.6 joules to one decimal place. So far, we've learned how to find the work done using a formula. Now we're going to learn how to find the work done graphically. We can use a force extension graph to find the work done in stretching a string to a particular extension. Equivalently, this will be the work done in stretching the spring until it pulls back with a specific force. So visualized on a graph, we want to know how much work done is required to stretch the spring, for example, this extension. Now, of course, looking at the graph, we can see that this is entirely equivalent to ask how much work do we have to do on a spring to bring it to a point where it exerts a certain force on us. Either way that it's phrased, the work done in stretching a spring to a given extension is equal to the area underneath the graph up to the extension that we have given it. So that is, if we want to know the work done in giving a spring this extension, then what we need to know is the area under the graph up to this extension. In other words, the work done is this area here. Now remember that formula that we had for calculating elastic potential energy worked up until the limit of proportionality. Well, this method works slightly further. It works up until the elastic limit, but it does only work up until this elastic limit. Beyond that, not all of the energy is put into the elastic potential energy store. For example, some of the energy will go into the thermal energy stores. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.